slit glance at an operating room of today. This is an unusual picture because few operating rooms are long enough for a switchboard of this size to be built without curves or angles. It can serve as many as 10,500 lines. Some peculiar switching devices made their appearance during the first few years of switchboard development. This one, for example, could accommodate only a small number of lines, but it was the first to introduce the key shelf, which had such an important development, and the cord circuit. Sections could be installed side by side and take care of 200 or 300 lines. But as telephone central offices increased in size, this method became difficult and awkward and was generally unsatisfactory until the invention in 1882 of the multiple switchboard. The thought underlying the multiple switchboard was that an operator must be able to connect any one of the particular group of lines she answered with any other line on the entire switchboard. That meant that terminals for every line had to appear somewhere within the reach of every operator. These terminals, which were small, circular openings on the switchboard, were called jacks. For example, terminal jacks for line 1, 2, 3, 4 appeared a number of times on the switchboard, but all of them were connected together. And any operator at the entire switchboard could establish a connection to line 1, 2, 3, 4. A splendid idea. But how was an operator to know whether or not a line she wished to connect to was busy? Perhaps an operator at another part of the switchboard had already established a connection to the line. A quick and accurate means was devised whereby the operator, before plugging in, touched the tip of her plug to the rim of the jack. If a sharp click was produced in a receiver, it meant that the line was busy. If no click was heard, it meant that the line was not in use and she could establish the connection.